today. Andy's cutting production of Ryzen 7000. NVIDIA just killed this off. NVIDIA is lowering this GPU's price. An AMD CPU made by Intel. And gaming performance between Ryzen 7000 and Intel's 13th gen. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, it looks like AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPUs aren't selling all that well. In fact, according to an internal report received by WCCF Tech, AMD is planning to lower production of their Zen 4 parts. According to this, it's due to a decline in the PC market overall, as well as a not-so-great reception of their AM5 platform. And honestly, it's understandable given the high starting price of their B650 boards. According to the report, AMD's 7900X is the best-selling CPU you, so enthusiasts are keeping the platform alive. Hopefully this will ultimately cause AMD to evaluate pricing with their board partners. Time will tell if anything will actually get cheaper. But first, if you haven't joined the number one place I recommend for learning computer science, now's the perfect time because they're offering you a chance to try it out for free today when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermelt. If you haven't heard about Brilliant yet, it's the ultimate learning platform that helps you learn the STEM field the right way, and that includes computer science. Now, when I say the right way, I mean they actually get you to do it yourself. They don't just lecture you or get you to memorize stuff. You learn by doing fun, interactive to puzzles that teach you the real concepts behind it all. And they have topics for every skill level, from computer science fundamentals all the way up to search engines and even quantum computing. Plus, their mobile app lets you do pretty much everything you can on desktop. So start learning anywhere you want by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And the first 200 of you who sign up using my link will get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermelt. Next up for today, if you remember early last year, NVIDIA introduced their RTX 3060, and with that came the company's first attempt at stopping miners from buying their gaming cards. It was supposed to effectively half the GPU mining capability in Ethereum, which was the biggest cryptocurrency for GPU miners at the time. Now, I said attempt because shortly after, NVIDIA accidentally released a driver that completely bypassed this limiter. A few months later, NVIDIA released essentially the same thing, but they branded these cards LHR or light hash rate. And while they didn't mistakenly release an override for the limiter, over time different hackers were able to bypass quite a bit of the performance loss. Well, fast forward and Nvidia has apparently killed off their LHR altogether. According to a discussion on Reddit, Nvidia's newest driver overrides LHR, giving some big performance gains over previous drivers. Now, it may seem obvious with the fact that Ethereum has gone proof of stake, so miners aren't able to mine anyway. But there is still Still Ethereum Classic, which PC Gamer tested and found a big boost in performance. With that said, Ethereum Classic doesn't give anywhere near what Ethereum did, but if there was a big spike in value, GPU prices could spike again. Of course, Nvidia's LHR was essentially useless anyway, but now it's officially over. Next up, if you saw my last video, you know that Nvidia recently killed off their 12GB RTX 4080. Well, given it was set to be released just next month, AIB partners were pretty far along in production. In fact, according to a new video from Gamers Nexus, Nvidia's partners are having their boxes either collected, then destroyed, or sent to recycling centers. Luckily, they've heard that Nvidia's partners are getting reimbursed for this, which is to be expected given this is Nvidia's screw up. Of course, what a company should do and what they actually do don't always go hand in hand. They do state that they haven't seen this themselves, but two companies have confirmed it with Gamers Nexus. Not only that, but they're claiming Nvidia plans to change it to either a 4070 or 4070 Ti. Obviously, that isn't a surprise, but according to this, Nvidia isn't just changing the name. The company actually plans to lower the price as well, meaning Nvidia seems to effectively confirm that it was named a 4080 so the company could raise the price. Thankfully, they received a enough backlash that this does look to be changing. Next, we have a pretty wild statement from Intel's CEO. It comes from a new interview by The Verge, where they got a chance to sit down with Pat Gelsinger to discuss how things are going so far with the company since he took over. And he says a couple really interesting things. For starters, when discussing a recent fab opening in Ohio, he mentioned putting logos of other companies to say their products were made here. And The Verge asked if Intel would put AMD's logo on it, meaning an AMD CPU fabricated by Intel. To which Pat Gelsinger replied with, quote, 
Hey, if they choose to manufacture with us, I will be thrilled to do that. It's the right thing at that level. These are large investments, and they are important for technology. They spawn technical communities. So yeah, AMD CPUs could one day be made by Intel. In fact, he went on to mention making chips for Nvidia, Qualcomm, and even Apple. Of course, given what we've heard about Apple's relationship with Intel, I don't think that would happen. Either way, he didn't stop there. He also mentioned that they plan to have the fastest CPUs, GPUs, and even discrete GPUs. He specifically mentioned Meteor Lake, so that's definitely something to look out for. Either way, it looks like Intel is definitely not going back to their old ways of just sitting on their wins, at least as long as they still have competition. And lastly for today, we finally have our first real matchup between Intel's upcoming 13th gen CPUs and Ryzen 7000. The story comes from extreme player on Billy Billy, who got a chance to test a couple of Intel's 13th gen parts, specifically the 13700K and 13600K, and he pitted them against AMD's Ryzen 7700X in quite a few games. And when we look through them, we can see AMD's Ryzen part tends to win in more games at the average frame rate. With that said, it is pretty close, and Intel's parts do get surprising maximum FPS performance, but overall AMD's Ryzen 7000 part does take the lead in more games than it loses at. Of course, these aren't enough games to absolutely declare a winner, plus some require faster memory with Ryzen 7000. Not surprisingly, Intel's parts crush Ryzen at workloads that utilize all of those cores, though Ryzen seems to do better at Adobe products. If you only game though, Ryzen 7000 may be the way to go. With that said, I definitely wait for more third-party reviews closer to when they're released. So while that does it for today, are you going to be picking up one of AMD's new CPUs or are you going with Intel? Let me know down in the comments below. And make sure to check out Brilliant at brilliant.org slash And as always, have a great day!